Good morning everybody, welcome to a very wet Lydia Fisheries. Today I'm on Manor Farm, it's 9am. I've come for a 24 hour session after some tench. Lovely swim, as you can see behind me. Now for those of you who don't know, um, these days they've changed it this year. Uh, Hunt's Corner and uh, Manor Farm, you need to book online. I booked this uh, swim a few days ago. Uh, the weather forecast wasn't quite what it is now. They forecast it to chuck it down yesterday. They forecast it to chuck it down all day today. Uh, fortunately, they've reeled that back in like they tend to do. And they're now telling me just till lunchtime. And it's going to be sunny this afternoon. So at least we can dry the kit out. Although I don't think that'll be too uh, too much good for fishing. But we'll we'll see. Uh, I've just had a chat with the chap next in the next door swimming. He's just packing up. He tells me he's been here since uh, three days ago. And he's had a couple of tench, which is great news. It's one about six, one about eight. Uh, the eight pounder from out in front of this swim. Fortunately, this next swim is not too far away. Uh, he's told me there's a slightly raised area, about 10 rats out, and to interrogate it, and that's where he had a tent from. So that's great news. He had a few carp as well, although he said it's gone very quiet, and the guys over on the other side are absolutely bagging up on carp, although they're not really our targets. But uh, the wind swung around, and it's pushing down that way, and uh, apparently all the fish have gone with it. But it's seemingly not the tench. <laughs> So what I've done is um, I've got a house up already because uh, I don't want my kit to get soaking wet. So I think now it's time to get out the uh, the rods, do a little bit of uh, lead work, see what see if I can find any spots, see exactly what we've got out there. Like I say, this guy said at ten wraps, and uh, we'll have a crack, suss out what we can what we can do, and then I'll uh, run you through the gear. <laughs> well, something's just rolled over there. I think I might be looking to fish too far out, right, to be honest. And about 10 rats. A lot closer than that. There's some weed out there. All right, what sort of weed is it? That's a bit Canadian. As my daughter always tells me, put it back in the water. This, especially at this time of year, it could have eggs on it. So, let's have a look. The sort of distance that fish rolled at. I would say that's about eight foot deep. Right. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, about eight and nine foot there. The fish are showing then, obviously, on a fish at that sort of distance. tapping nicely then I've just gone into some weed it felt nice then and then I've just just dropped into a little bit of weed yeah that's reasonably clear over there for a couple of rod lengths uh, and then we get really weeded up <clears throat> so from here you probably won't be able to see on there. But basically, at this distance, I'm not sure how many wraps we are, between a gap in the trees there where there's a red tree and the window on the shop stroke cafe, there's a, there's a clear area. And there's a bank of weed this side of it. I'm going to just have another cast. And then I'm going to check how far we're, we're wrapped up. I'm going to try casting a little bit further. Yeah, I've got a bit of a drop there. 
So we're at nine wraps there. So one, two, three, four, five. Right, so that's a lot shallower there. So we've got a slightly deeper spot there at seven and a half wraps and a spot there at nine wraps. So I think that, as we've got some very tenchy weather, I think that'll probably do me. That's all I need to know. I really need a feel to get the rods out. So before I do that, I'll get this spot on, get a bit of bait out. Before I do that, I'll run you through what I've got in my spod mix. Now, I'm going to fish um, helicopter rigs, which I'll run you through shortly. But before we do that, I'll just run you through this spod mix as I'm going to start spodding. What I've got in my lovely bucket down here is a mix smells lovely what we've got in there is some hemp some three mil or four mil krill sticky baits krill pellets i've got some 2.3 mil sticky baits manila pellets and i've got some krill active powder as well and i've laced it as well because I'm old school and I remember going tench fishing back in the 80s is uh, tench love custard powder <laughs> so I've laced it with half a pot of custard powder in there as well which is uh, giving it that and the manila palette is giving it a lovely sweet aroma and the krill is giving it a lovely fishy aroma so that's what we've got in there now I'm going to fish as I said helicopter rigs over this but like I say I don't want to mess about too much because it's cracking weather for fishing. <laughs> Not cracking weather for standing about in the rain. But I'm, what I'm going to do is get this gear off here, this lead and this marker float. I'm going to get the spot on, I'm going to get some bait in, and hopefully get the swims going because I think what's going to happen, oh, excuse me, disappearing from shot. What's going to happen is the weather's going to go all nice and hot later on and it's going to be a bit rubbish that's my take on things so i want to get going now need to be off at 9 a.m in the morning so we've only got a short window in the morning as well to fish so what i'm going to do is get this if i can find it spot on here we go get this spot on get some of this lovely stuff out there see if we can catch a few tench before the sun comes out. <laughs> right. Uh, absolute tip round here, but we'll sort all that out when we've got uh, when we've got a minute. Let's get fishing first. So we go nine wraps towards the window on the shop. I do a lot of spotting. You have to whack it a bit harder than I think. There we go. Right, well, that just drifted in the wind a little bit. Have to whack that a bit harder than that. Now, I've got braided leader on here, so I'm going to put a finger stall on so I don't need to chop my finger off. God, this weather really doesn't like me today. <laughs> but if we catch some fish, not a problem, is it? <laughs> right, let's try again. We'll put perhaps five or six spawns at nine wraps towards the shop. And then about seven towards the other side. Right. It's a bit harder. 
Venga. Eh, venga. Para. Right, all the prep is done. I'm going to get the rods out. Now, the rods I'm going to be using today are Dower Power Mesh Pound a Quarter Test Curve. Be enough to cope with any tension here. They've got lovely action. They come with two top sections, like a twin tip. I've got the Avon top section. No need for quiver tips today because we're going to be using alarms, as you can see over my shoulder there. Um, real wise, I've got my ever faithful Dower. GSBRLT 3000 reels. And on the business end, I've got one of these uh, Corda, I think they're called Dark Matter. It's like a really thick mono leader, that's what it feels like. Um, but it's this already tied helicopter rigs. And what I've done is just changed the, the, the clip on the end because I like these quick change clips. And on the, the end of there, I'm going to go with maggot feeder. This is just a Corum combi feeder. I like these because you can, uh, you can take the ends out, should you wish, and turn it into an open-ended feeder and use it for grain bait. Cracking idea, I think. So what I'm going to be using first for is obviously maggots. You want to get some maggots in. I've got three pints of maggots with me. And I think I'm going to fish maggots on a couple of rods and perhaps worm on another rod now i'm going to use obviously helicopter rig uh, very very short hook link i'm sure you've seen this before uh, what i'm going to do is pop these up I've got a couple of fake maggots on there you can probably see and some real ones on the hook the idea is that this sits on the bottom this is popped up about three inches something like that off the bottom right in the eye line of any tench passing. That's the idea. Right, I've got a couple of these rods, so I'm gonna get them out on the seven wrap spot. And then I'll just run you through the other one, which I'm gonna use on the further spot, on the nine wrap spot. Great stuff for fishing. <laughs> Getting absolutely soaked, but uh, we're fishing. <laughs> Wonderful. Right, let's get the other one set up. And those of you regular viewers to the channel will probably realise that this is uh, this is really a closed season thing. I'm, just fancy doing some tent fishing in the closed season. Obviously, I'll still be getting up the canal. But I did fancy doing my tench PB, which is a very modest six pound, which I caught in, oh, I don't know, about 1986, I think, <laughs> something like that. It's a reasonable size fish back then. <laughs> but uh, not particularly big these days. I don't do a lot of tench fishing. I'm in a terrible area in the country for, for tench. It's just under an hour to get here, so it's not too bad at all. Not too bad, and it's a reasonable drive from home. Right, I think I'm going to put this this rod on the same spot. Well, not well, not on exactly the same spot, but on the same uh, bit that I've uh, wrapped up to. It. And I'll wrap this one up at, at the same distance at seven, seven and a half wraps. Shorten this hook link down. I think we put a worm kebab rig and a pop up maggot rig on the, on the seven and a half spot. And then on the other spot, we'll, uh, we'll rotate around. Now, I've got these, um, these dower rods and fairly new. Um, really. I fancy using them on the river as well. It'd be ideal for a bit of chubbing, a bit of, uh, bit of roving on the small rivers. So that's the idea. You can use, you know what, obviously I'll only use one. 
when I do that, but uh, that, that's the plan really. My gear sort of doubles up. Just hoping this time we actually get some <laughs> get some fish. I'm gonna try pop-up rigs to start with, I think. They seem to be more successful from what I read than uh, rigs on the bottom. But if we're struggling, obviously we'll change things around. Just popping these rigs up as well, of course, means that if we are over a bit of light weed, it's not going to be a problem. Oh dear, it's proper stair rods now. <laughs> so my third rod, for now anyway, is going to be this fella. Now what I've got here is a Dower Infinity Evo 12 foot barbell rod, pound and three quarters. Now I'm gonna use this on the further out spot, exactly the same setup, slightly heavier feeder. It's just got a bit more backbone for uh, we encounter any more weed out there or just to, to punch this feeder out, slightly heavier feeder out against this for a bit of crosswind we've got. Right, I think we'll go the maggot popped up maggots out there first off on here again I've got the same reel as the other setup I do love them lovely reels be even nicer if we manage to uh, pay attention on one play several tench even better Right, I'm going to wrap this up at nine wraps. Well, we'll, uh, we'll work ro those rods, obviously. Every sort of 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we'll recast. <laughs> Time for a cup of coffee, I think. Get that kettle on. But I promise, no, um, no slow motion views of boiling kettles or anything. Definitely not in my videos. <laughs> I mean, I watch quite a lot of carp fishing videos and do get a little bit tired of seeing slow motion shots of, like I say, kettles boiling and etc. etc. <laughs> Right. I think there's probably enough water in my, soaked into my trousers to, uh, <laughs> to have a cup of tea from. If I bring it, wrung them out, I should have put my waterproof trousers on really, but I didn't. I'm quite sure why I didn't, but I didn't. I think that's off yet. I'm gonna brave it in a minute. It's been about 20 minutes, I suppose, since we cast out. So once those, uh, once those feeders are empty, they're not really doing a lot. There's not a lot of point to them, is they might as well have a lead on. So uh, we'll have another, blimey. Oh. A bit of a wind guard for the, for the kettle. Oh, excuse me, back. There we go. <laughs> cool, it's nice and warm as well. <laughs> Sat by that. <laughs> be hanging my trousers over it in a minute, drying them. <laughs> they have pushed the weather back a bit. Again, it was, uh, when I got here, they said it was gonna be, stop raining about midday. Well, they've pushed that back now to sort of two-ish. It's gonna ease off. There we go. Well, it doesn't take long, does it? Cooking the kettle at home. I guess 
just right as well. Now, before this year, just to put you in the picture, uh, if you're perhaps new to the channel, well, people who watch the channel will know I don't do this. I mean, I record video every single session I do. Every session gets uh, gets videoed. So you see absolutely everything that I do fishing-wise. Uh, don't, don't always make a video if I blank. Don't imagine you want to see me blanking, but I do always refer to everything. Um, I did refer to a couple of sessions I had here a few weeks ago. Uh, unsuccessful sessions but um, aside from that I've not been night fishing like this you know all night fishing for I reckon I stopped when I was about 18 which was uh, a long time ago <laughs> as the uh, grey will attest it's a long long time ago I used to do this sort of thing and I used to do a very similar thing to this I used to fish the gravel pits down at Sorenstead at the Cotfold Water Park I used to fish on the Ashton Keynes Angling Club ticket and on the South Cerny Angling Club ticket again do a lot of tench fishing but I kind of stopped doing it and got more into the river fishing sort of as I got into my 20s and yeah, I got into bands and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, as you do in your twenties, and I mean, being in bands, I play guitar, so I was in bands and doing a lot of touring stuff. The fishing took a little bit of a back seat. So yeah, and I've always been been river fishing, and never really got back into doing the overnighters and all this sort of stuff. And just got a few bits of kit together, sort of cheaply, cheap as I could. It's a lot of help these days with uh, Angling Direct. They, they do a lot of good kit. For relatively little money and they do have offers on fairly regularly as well and i've been sort of picking bits and pieces of kit up when they've had offers on thinking that in the close season season i'd like to come and do a bit of this and linear it takes me the same time to get here as it does to get to the y uh, from home in stratford so it's, it's just an hour so yeah it's, it's not an issue at all I do like fishing these lakes where you can actually book. It's nice to know where you're going on any particular day. I did expect though that the the wind, they forecast the wind to be blowing that way into the road bank, but it's not. It's more blowing towards me really, or into certainly into the road bank, Whitney Bank corner, and that can't be a bad thing. Certainly not warm sitting here. <laughs> But um, if it means the fish are going to move up here, then that is not a problem at all. I mean, the wind is properly pushing into my bank now. Well, something's just rolled to my left. <laughs> About five rod lengths out, that's all. <laughs> Very close. And I've just noticed there's a bit of a flat spot coming up out where my bait is. And maybe just something grubbing around where the oils are coming out of the, uh, out of the spot mix. I've seen a couple of tench roll closer in than where I'm fishing. But it just seem very weedy. Not really able to present. I'll perhaps have a lead about, well, perhaps when it stops raining, I'll do a bit of interrogation. Swim next to me, to my left. There's no one in there. There's no one booked in there tomorrow, t tonight. So um, I've got all that water to go at. I could even bait a margin spot and keep an eye on it. I'll go around and have a look. gone one it's still raining and we're still waiting I mean it's the middle of the day isn't it I'm not 
massively hopeful that we're going to catch anything but I think really this evening hours of darkness and uh, first thing in the morning it's going to be prime time but we'll see aha well something has just rolled right over my spot <laughs> I'm just going to cover a fish I've just seen roll over here actually Down there. I'm gonna do a little go over there. Yeah, if it's just rolled over my far right spot. But something decent just rolled out there, as I say. Shush. up the wall, didn't it? And again, a bit further out from my spot. Yeah, hopefully it came out on the camera. Let's say something. There was a bit of bubbling going on, and I thought I saw some it roll, and then something rolled a bit further out. It's just that it's quite deep across here. I had a little bit of a lead about with a marker floating with that water banging in, see this fizzing up going on here again. Just see some bubbles fizzing up there. That, that wind's been hacking in, but it's completely switched around and it's going that way now. <laughs> but it does mean I can see what's going on here. And as I say, there's some fit, there was some fizzing going on. As soon as it went flat, I noticed there was some fizzing going on. And then something rolled and I, I mean, it properly rolled like tench roll, not like uh, they would expect a carp to do. Yeah, feeling quite confident to be honest. Well, I've just put a pop some popped up maggots over there. I'm just tying up some new rigs actually, just to make it a little bit more subtle because my rigs at the moment are about three inches popped up off the bottom. I'm thinking perhaps it's a little bit obvious. I'm fishing clear spots so they don't need to be popped up too much. So I'm just going to tie up some lower, lower lying rigs. But uh, hopefully, we can have a bite and certainly fish over there anyway. Yeah, something's just rolled over top of my spot out there again. They're looking quite positive. Oh, here we go. It's splashed out over there. Certainly some fish in this corner. If they keep showing over there, it's maybe worth putting a bit of bait down. I've got that rod out there for now. Yeah, things are looking good and quite promising. Just need a bite now. I need to get it in. <laughs> I think it, it can only be a matter of time. I'm looking at my spot now and it's fizzing. <laughs> They're on me. <laughs> I don't really know what else I can do. Still tempted to, to put a rod out there at some point. I think perhaps it might be wise to introduce a bit of bait. Fish are coming out over there on this left hand side. I think perhaps I'll get the spod rod out in a minute. Just put a little bit, perhaps four or five spods over here and just keep an eye on it. It's something, uh, somewhere I can drop a, a bait. Nothing happens out there, but if, if nothing happens out there, I'll be absolutely amazed. Now I've seen fish moving on, on the feed and rolling above it.
Well, we've got to run. <laughs> Literally just recasting that rod. There we go. Blimey. Got me in the weed. It's coming slowly. There we go. I literally just recast this rod. I think. I think we've now just got a ball of weed. I know we haven't. I think it's whatever it is. Presumably a tench, I think is uh, got his head in the weed again. There we go. I think he's uh, got us across this other rod. Oh, it is a tench. Fantastic. Whee. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> it's all good. I'm going to pick all my lines up, of course. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> Literally just recast this rod. Fabulous. Come on, you come. <laughs> Not having any of it. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic scrap under the rod tip. <laughs> it's best to get into these reeds next to me. Cool. Scrap under the rod tip. Come on. <laughs> you know, it's fighting under the rod tip. Come on, in you come. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Oh, guys, we're in again. Well, can you believe it? I was just weighing that fish. It looks like we're in again. <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> I was literally just weighing that fish. <laughs> and we're in again. And I can tell you, this one I've got in the net is £6.9. bank of weeds a bit problematic out there. I have to stand up and that's it, right. It's just that big bank of weed we discovered before we started. God, this is crazy. We still got a fish on? <laughs> or is it just weed? 
think maybe it's just weed. Yes, we've been done. I oh, know we haven't, there's a little tension there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Certainly not as big as the previous one. Wonderful. Right. I'll hook this, unhook this one in the net. Certainly not as big as the previous one. <laughs> a lot rounder. There we go. <laughs> Soak me. <laughs> oh, what a crazy five minutes. <laughs> but we'll have a look at the uh, this little round lady first. This is the one I've just had. There we are. <laughs> is that four pound? Something like that, I would think. Wonderful. <laughs> and then this new PB, six pound nine. Feisty female. There she is. Wonderful. Well, wow, it's come to life all of a sudden. Absolutely fantastic. Over the moon with that. Wonderful stuff. <laughs> right, let's get them back. We'll sort ourselves out and get fishing again. <laughs> well, that other rod is still fishing, but uh, well recovered now. Back you go, ladies. <sighs> well, all of a sudden, we're catching tench and the sun is shining. <laughs> Look like some big black clouds around there, so I think we might still get... Uh, shower or two but uh, PB achieved fab be great if we could do it a couple more times as well wouldn't it <laughs> oh no I'm not going to be greedy but that would be nice that bank of weed out there is providing proving to be a bit problematic but uh, can't really do anything about that now I've made a change which has completely changed my fortunes I knew there was tents, as you've seen in the video, there's tents, all the, I knew they were out there, they were rolling, they were all over me. I said, no bites. Now what I was doing was I had my baits popped up, only a couple of inches, three inches at the most. I dropped them down, I tied some more hook links up, they were like inch and a half off the bottom. Still no bites, still fish rolling. Okay, go on bottom baits and literally both rods within 10 minutes of being cast in, the first one within five. I've got, they've both gone. So clearly, popping the bait up was a big no-no. So you live and learn, don't you? I, you know, it's right in their eye line and clearly, yeah. either far too cute to, uh, to take baits that are off the bottom like that or, uh, or that's a hell of a coincidence. But uh, that's what I've done. I've now got some cruising about out there. Carp or something cruising about. And now we've gone on bottom baits. That maggot rod's back out. I'm going to go and do the worm kebab rig. The second one on maggots, first one worm kebab. And then I'm going to change that foot, that, the more distant rod. We'll change that over to a bottom bait as well. And uh, hopefully get no sleep all night. That'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> And as you can see, the, the wind is banging down the other end of the lake. Got our backs to the wind. Now it's going more in the direction it was forecast to go in, although it's more of a sort of northwesterly now. Mm, it's rolled just beyond the spot. A lot of fish activity up here, which is great. Need to do a bit more converting, don't we? I think we found the right method now. It's just a case of uh, as soon as you start catching fish, that sun came out <laughs> and put mockers on thing. I think. Oh, blimey! 
<laughs> I think that's a bite. <laughs> Blimey, this one's not stopping. And some weed again. That's it, kick free. Oh, blimey. I'm not sure this is a tench. <laughs> I think we may, <laughs> I think we may have a carp on here. Either that or a tench, big tench, that'd be nice. Anything with this at the moment. Yeah, I don't think this can be a tench. It's a big one if it is. Hope it is. Gaining a bit. Keeps getting weeded up. And you gain a bit, then you get weeded up again. I'd love to think this is a tench. Well, guys, sorry for the uh, interruption. <clears throat> Battery pack died on the camera. You haven't missed much. I managed to quickly switch it over, one-handed. <laughs> I'm now starting to think this is a car, uh, tench. Unfortunately, it's coming in. It's going to be trying to get in these reeds if we don't make some ground on it quick. Got a lot of reeds to my right. And it's reasonably deep as well, so I wouldn't want to go wading in after it. God, scary stuff. And these are trembling. I can see it. Oh, it is a tench. Looks a nice one too. God, what a scrap. I think he might be done. <laughs> Like barbel. I think they are and then they're not. Let's get some extension on this net. Come on. Sneak her in before she's ready. Yes. Got her. Fantastic. <laughs> Apologies for the, uh, <laughs> the bit you missed. But you did only miss about 10 seconds while I realised what was going on. Oh, blimey. And I think that... Uh, that looks like it's possibly another PB. <laughs> ah, falling out in the net. <laughs> Very lively. There we are, just wader. Another PB. <laughs> As suspected. A very honest. Seven pound fifteen. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Absolutely wonderful. What a fish and what a scrap. <laughs>
Oh, over the moon with that. That's fantastic. Wonderful. Right, let's not keep her out. Let's get her back in the water. <laughs> we'll give her a couple of minutes in there. Get her breath back before we uh, send her on her way with a great deal of thanks. <laughs> Right, well she's resting up there, we'll get this rub back in. Well, she's got that rod back out and she's certainly ready to go. Off you go. My lovely, <laughs> very graceful exit. <laughs> Green torpedo, fantastic. Awesome stuff. It's been a bit quiet for a couple of hours. But uh, it's getting towards that time now where you'd expect the fish to start moving. What I've done is, uh, as I said, this rod is now, sorry, my right hand, as was rod, is now on the left and it's over there in that bay on a little bit of bait. We've not had a bite on that rod yet or even any indication, but there have been fish over there. They may well be caught. They may well be caught because there's quite a lot of anglers along this right hand bank and the left hand bank. Three anglers, well, sorry, two anglers over there. There's nobody down here except me and obviously I'm just tench fishing. <laughs> so I'm wondering if they've come up here because it's quiet. I think, as I said, if we don't get any action on this rod until it were um, up to dusk, I think during the hours of darkness, I'm going to put a solid bag over there. I think there may well be some carp over there. It is a tench session, but we can nick a bonus carp. Wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Don't seem to be any tench over there. As I say, I've not had any indications, but we'll see. You never know. If we start catching tench over there, then I shan't. I should be, I should be tench fishing. Well, it's gone nine o'clock now. Sun has obviously set. And it's gone very, very quiet from a from a rod's point of view and from a fish spotting point of view. The, the, the lake has gone, well, as you can see, it's like a sheet of glass, apart from down the other end. There's a little bit of ripple. There's no fish moving at all. Nothing at all. Not seen a fish for perhaps a couple of hours now. Nothing top or roll or or anything. No fizzing or nothing. They're sort of debating what to do, really. I'm certainly going to change this rod, I think, in here. Um, we'll put a, a solid bag out, put a carp rod out that way, I think. I've not had any indications that there might be any tench over there. And I'll certainly perhaps leave the other two rods for now. In fact, I'm going to recast them and then leave them for perhaps an hour. And perhaps if nothing's happened by, say, 10.30, we'll, uh, we'll perhaps take stock then and see if we want to change things around. I've got the option to put another solid bag out, perhaps on the spot out here, and just leave one of these on say you know worm kebab rig perhaps i think that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to get this uh get the two rods that are out on the spot out front get those refreshed and uh and then we'll take it from there i think Just considering perhaps perhaps but i've uh, decided against but i did think perhaps i'd put Perhaps on one of these rods I could put like a small boilie or something like that. But the problem with that is we're much, much more likely to catch a carp than on these pound and a quarter rods. With these pockets of weed about, we're going to get absolutely beasted if we catch a carp. So I think that's, that's probably not a wise idea. Well, that's me done for the evening. I'm going to get my head down. It's about half ten now. I want to get up 
uh, before five really at first light uh, look for fish and, and get straight on with the tench fishing so um, I'll see you first thing in the morning at first light if not before with perhaps a low, nice tench or a lovely carp in the night good morning everybody the night was very uneventful not had a single beep nothing's happened at all it's all gone very quiet it's first light now as you can see a bit blurry eyed <laughs> woke up about 10 or 15 minutes ago and uh, been watching the water nothing's showed at all as you can see it's very very flat calm so you'd certainly see some fish but uh, I've not seen anything at all so I think it's time to refresh the rods get a little bit more bait in we've got uh, we've got till nine o'clock before we need to be off so we've got four hours hopefully we can winkle out another fish or two so what I've done this morning I've put all three rods out on the spot out the front here where had the fish from nothing happened in the bay here last night despite seeing all this fishing there yesterday but it is about 12 foot deep in there so what I've decided is probably the best thing to do is as we've got about four three and a half four hours left just to concentrate out the front here just concentrate on one area so we'll keep working the feeders and I'm going to get some uh, Guess a little spot mixing over the top as well, see if we can uh, kickstart the swim. Then we'll treat ourselves to a nice cup of coffee. <laughs> I said all that, I've just seen something roll a little bit over there. Just didn't look like a particularly big fish. It's difficult to tell. We'll keep an eye on things. We can always have a move around. There's been no fish in there, obviously there'll be bait around leftover from yesterday we'll just we'll just keep our eyes peeled we'll get half a dozen spawns out there and uh, see if we can kick start something in here Looking very promising this morning. Nothing showing up at all. I can see 95% of the lake from here. Not a single fish show at all. Ah, just seen something bosh out right at the other end of the lake <laughs> by the shop. Nice to see some tench rolling though, uh, over over my bait, but uh, nothing at all. Kind of get the feeling that the fish have perhaps moved on that wind, blowing down that way since yesterday. It switched round, it was coming in my face, wasn't it, when we first got here, it's just slowly switched round and now it's pushing down that corner. We're going to have a sunny day, as you can probably tell from the sky and the fact that the sun is coming up there unhindered. So guys, that's me done. Time to make tracks for home. Bit of an anticlimax this morning, but uh, you can probably see, point you around, the wind has been pushing down that way, certainly for since yesterday evening, um, and there's nothing showing up here at all. Absolutely nothing. Yesterday, 
perhaps because of the wind, I'm not sure why, but the wind was pushing up here when I arrived and there was plenty of fish here, as we saw. They were all over me. And uh, just, as I, just as I managed to sort out uh, tactics, we had a couple and then uh, had the other one a little bit later and it all sort of died off when the sun came out. And uh, I did wonder whether anything would happen in the night, but it didn't. And like I say, this morning has been, I've not seen a single fish in this half of the lake, to be honest. Not heard anyone's bite along to go in. I was talking to the chap next door. He said it was hard going too, so uh, he'd not had anything. So yeah, but that aside, it's been a really, really enjoyable session to do two BBs in one trip. Absolutely fantastic. Now, I shall be back at some point, but I think probably next time you'll see me, I'll be down the canal. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that, something a bit different. Tight lines, enjoy your own angling. Many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support and I'll see you all again very soon.